It began in St. Louis with the presidential election four years ago. A new twist on the old adage, vote with your feet. I'm so thrilled to see so many people here. By the midterms in 2018, it had moved from sidewalk theater, seen by a few dozen, to an event at the Missouri History Museum attended by more than 1,000. It's grown super fast. It is called Dance the Vote, and they had hoped this election season to take their biggest leap yet. And then along came the pandemic. Joan Lipkin, founder of that uppity theater company, began Dance the Vote in 2016 as a way to get new voters to register and encourage registered voters to vote. I thought, I love dance, and dance is universal, and it incorporates many, many different styles, and then we're not bound in text, spoken word, right, as much. Let's do something with dancers. And so I convened a meeting with some women that I knew, and we had our coffee, and we said, this is a historic moment. We're going to do something. Okay, folks, this is Chuck Lavazzi, Senior Performing Arts Critic at 88.1 KDHX here in St. Louis. And with me here on my right, uh, your left, you just saw her a few seconds ago. She's behind Dance the Vote 2022, playwright, author, activist, and all around very busy and cool person, Joan Lipkin. So, Joan, Thank welcome you. to the Culture Channel. I'm so excited to be in virtual life with you. <laughs> yeah, in virtual. So let's talk about what this is all about. What is Dance the Vote 2022 and why is it so important? Well, Dance the Vote is an organization that I started six years ago to mm -hmm. use the arts uh, to interest people in voting awareness, what I call voting literacy. And the way it, 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 it began is that I had a lot of friends who were feeling very disenfranchised. They wanted to be involved. They didn't know how. So I thought, let's get artists involved. So our very first event was outside my friend Tom Ray's iconic record store, Vintage Vinyl, <laughs> on, a <Yes>. rainy, <laughs> on a rainy afternoon for a few dozen people. Um, and then um, a year and a half later at the midterms, we had over a thousand people mm -hmm. show up. Uh, nice. at the History Museum to see art, to see dance uh, and singer, hear singers and, and uh, poets and also register to vote. So it was pretty exciting. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. and then, <laughs> and then the pandemic hit. Yeah. yeah. And uh, not only did the pandemic hit, um, but George Floyd was murdered. And so I said to Ashley Tate, who is a choreographer uh, with whom I work, very closely, um, we need to pivot. And uh, that's pivot is probably gonna become like the most used word, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> overused era, word, yeah. Right, overused word, the word pivot. But um, what we decided to do was to go virtual and mm -hmm. primarily to commission um, choreographers of color to do short dance um, videos about voting or the issues that might compel them to vote. And somebody picked us up on Instagram and we wound up on national television um, nice. um, with a program with Global Citizen. So what's interesting, Chuck, is that then we were seen by thousands and thousands of people. Um, but we were virtual. We didn't have that yeah. very essential, exciting in-person experience. And so this year, even though uh, COVID is far from over, uh, it's not going to be virtual and you have live events coming up. We so do. Tell me about them. <laughs> well, I'm just so happy that we can be in space together, even if it's outside. The Missouri History Museum loves this project. Um, they do a lot of stuff about voting. They had a mm -hmm. wonderful program about suffrage. And um, so they invited us back and we're going to be in the front of the museum. Uh, we have lots of co-sponsoring organizations, including the NAACP and the League of Women Voters. And um, so we'll have community tabling. We're also going to have an area for kids. And we have these nice. great signs that we've made that say future voter. And we'll have an cool. area for kids. Yeah, so that they can decorate and wear their signs. Um, we're, of course, going to have a, a very big arts uh, component as well, uh, including 
some mm-hmm. cabaret singers. <laughs> yes, yes. I know that organized by Katie McGrath, who is also uh, quite the activist yes, and a fine singer and a, a, a cabaret award winner when she was in New York. Yeah, I know you're going to have a lot. I'm looking at a screen to my right here. And uh, people who will be familiar to those in the cabaret scene, including I see right now Mary Keller and Jeff Wright and uh, Mike Crystal and, and many other people who will be familiar. Yeah. And well, this is, yeah. Well, it's and, and this is on the 24th, right? This yes. is on the September 24th. Yeah, it's, it, it's funny because she said to me, well, I, I said, what do we call this? Because initially it was going to be Katie and her partner, Chet, and they have mm. um, some wonderful renditions of Lean on Me and Glory that I've seen them do at rallies. And she said, well, how about if we just call it Katie McGrath and Friends and I invite some people? And she started inviting people. And then more people said, well, they wanted to do it too, which I love, right? Just come mm-hmm. on up. Chuck, come on and be part of this, <laughs> part of the choir. So she's organized that. Um, but we're also going to have six different dance companies, um, all of which are very um, racially and ethnically diverse and also diverse in terms of age. We'll have some speakers, but this is not a rally um, because I, I wanted something that would be more interactive and energize people in a different way. But we are going to have some extraordinary speakers at our rally. We're going to have Denise Lieberman, who is one of the voting experts in the country, and she heads up a group that I'm involved with called the Missouri Voter Protection Coalition. She's going to speak and she's going to help people understand exactly what's going on. <laughs> Mm-hmm. exactly what's going on when it comes to voting in Missouri and what's needed in terms of IDs, et cetera. Uh, we'll also have the wonderful Reverend Daryl Gray, uh, who is the head of Missouri Faith Voices. And, and I want to take a moment and say that, that of course, the, the fight for voting rights is, is decades and decades long, and it's often been helmed by people of faith. Mm-hmm. Um, so we felt that he's he's terrific i've been at rallies with him before and 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 uh people of faith especially in the african-american community are doing very heavy lifting um around voting and they are predominantly uh suppressed um but many groups are at this point and so uh he's going to be speaking and katie bannister um is also going to be speaking and katie is a very gifted performer charismatic performer and speaker um who i first work with in our disability project and Mm -hmm. she uh so she has a beautiful poem about disability and voting uh katie is a quadriplegic she also has a play opening uh at the cransburg about her experiences as what she calls being a woman on wheels yeah uh, a woman on w-o-w yes okay. <laughs> w-o-w She's and, a wow. uh, All right. yeah she and she is a wow, she has that wow factor for sure and uh so we'll have a legal and faith and disability and a collegiate perspective but there's even more than this it's like there's more now going how much on. would you but wait there's more now how oh, much wait, would you there's more <laughs> But there is more. Um, So uh, we are hoping to take the largest photo of people who are committed uh, to uh, voting in the midterms, either Mm -hmm. as current voters or as a future voter, a 10 year old who will be committed to voting in that midterm when it's their turn. Um, We're hoping to take the largest photo that's ever been taken in the state. We hired a drone photographer. So we're asking people to come at 1230. I will see you there at 1230, Chuck. And then we'll on the uh, 24th. Okay. It's that Saturday, September 24th. And but there is there's just a couple of other things I want to mention. Um, I don't think I'm saving the best for last, but I also am saving the most breaking news for last. Maybe I buried the lead here. I don't know. Um, (laughs) That's okay. uh, Well, it's. so I'm part of a national cohort with the uh, American Library Association, and we are working with the uh, St. Louis Public Library, the Central Library downtown, and we are creating a, a brand new project called the Voters of St. Louis. Nice. And when you come, you can uh, have a really beautiful, take a photo in front of a really beautiful backdrop that we are creating. 
and you can also register to vote with the library. But when you take your photo, you're going to get a giveaway. Maybe it'll be a poster. Maybe it'll be a great <laughs> mark with a QR code that has all sorts of great information on it. We're excited about this project. And there's, I don't know, 17 or 18 libraries in St. Louis City alone. There's almost 20 in St. Louis County. And we think this concept of the voters of St. Louis is actually something that can be shared all around our region. We're hoping to offer it as a template. What we're interested in is really connecting people with their precious right to vote, making sure they have the information that they need, uh, helping them to rem remember what that first voting experience was like or mm -hmm. what it feels like to get ready to vote. Um, so that's going to be part of it, too. I mean, there's just a lot of elements. There's there's it's sort of like there's something for everyone. And and I, we really wanted to make sure that children felt very honored and involved with this. So we're going to have a children's section and the children can decorate their their posters. That's very good. It, let's talk about, okay, this is, so it's on the 24th, 1230 to 3 in front of the History Museum. Um, of course, there's a reason why this is so important in 2022. And I, we really have to address that because as we were talking before I started the recording, midterms traditionally have low voter turnout. And boy, this is one time when we just cannot have that. That's right. That's right? exactly right. Well, I think one of the issues, Chuck, is that mostly people think about the presidential. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more glamorous. There's the debates and there's all the commercials and all the intensity and the excitement. And I think most people, even if they're very educated, often don't realize that the people that they vote for in the midterms, the people that are elected to the Senate and the Congress actually can often have more of an effect on their daily lives than who is, you know, who, who the president is. And, and so in not fact, they should. Them. That's the way this was designed to work. <laughs> that is the way that this was designed to work. But often they don't know that. And they also don't realize that every election matters. So we have this proliferation of all kinds of things that are going on that are quite disturbing, including the banning of books, right? Mm -hmm. And harassment of libraries and librarians mm -hmm. and educators. Well, if you vote for who's on the school board, you have something to say about that. So exactly. every single election matters. And why don't people do it? They 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 get they feel disenfranchised. They they can't track all the information. The world is feels overwhelming sometimes. Maybe they're not excited about the candidates, but there are a lot of resources that are there to help. And I am a big fan of the League of Women Voters, and I have male friends who are members of the League of mm -hmm. Women Voters. But you can get information on all the candidates. You can always get them on the issues there. They're going to be on hand to help people register to vote. This is also a voter registration event and a way to make sure that you can register to vote in a way that is safe, that is not contrary to any of the more recent legal um, proceedings, of right. which there are many right now. Yes, and people need to know, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, people need to know what they need to do in order to make absolutely sure that they have the right to vote and that they don't get to the polling place on yes. election day until they find out that, oh, guess what? Your name's been taken off the roll. Surprise. Yeah, so, yeah. it and, happens. And, yes. Yeah, we know it happens. It's been documented. So we really yeah. need people to you show up for this event and you will get all the information you need and you'll also be entertained. I mean, what could be better, right? I just think to me, it's the combination of everything I love and believe in. I believe in democracy and I believe in the arts and I believe in community. And so this is an, you know, this is an opportunity for all of that. One other thing I'll say is that this week when you and I are having this beautiful conversation happens to be a disability voter education week. Mm -hmm. And uh, people with disabilities are the largest and most disenfranchised voting bloc in, in the country. There are 38 million people with disabilities who are registered to vote, um, but they don't always do it. And it sometimes can be quite difficult for them to get to where they need to. Um, and, and I think that we need to think about people with disabilities as not the other, because uh, we're actually all 
at some point going to experience disability, whether it's ongoing or uh, whether it's just temporary at some point in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, <laughs> I do believe in the separation of church and state, but I don't believe in the separation of disability and non-disability. So all of our events really try to include that. So we're going to have, as I said, we're going to have Katie Bannister, who's an incredible speaker, but we're also reaching out to a lot of children and families with disabilities. Um, this is an event for everybody. It really is. And if you if, and and fortunately, uh, you don't have to have been taking notes while this is going on, because right down here in the video description field, you will see all the links you need to find out more about Dance the Vote 2022. And you will also find links to the uh, Dance the Vote YouTube channel so you can see some of the videos from last time. Chuck, I just thank you so much for this conversation. I mean, I just <laughs> think you're wonderful and oh, you've been bless doing your heart. You've been, <laughs> bless your heart. You've been doing this community work for so long. And uh, it's, I, I'm glad that you recognize that this is an arts event. Yes. <laughs> it belongs on a culture channel. It's also a political event, but it's an arts event. We're going to have fantastic performers. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it's all so, free. It's all free. Come for the entertainment. Stay for the vital information. Uh, once again, this is Chuck Lavazzi, and over there, uh, Joan Lipkin, all about Dance the Vote 2022, September 24th, uh, 2022. Right now it is September 14th, so it's coming up in 10 days. Go to all the links below to find out more. Joan, thanks so much for taking some time to tell us about this vitally important event. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Chuck. Okay. Everybody else, see you all next time on Chuck's Culture Channel. Bye-bye.